Hi, in this video we're going to look at one more numerical approximation method and it is in section 2.6 of our textbook. So the Runge-Kutta method of order 4. So I do not expect you to necessarily be able to go through the derivation of what is happening with this formula, but I want to just talk about it a little bit because I think it's a really nice use of several different things that you learned really throughout calculus. So the first line of what I have typed here uh, is based on the fundamental theorem of calculus. So essentially, if you have a function y of x and its derivative y prime of x, then what I've got here on the right hand side is a definite integral from xn to x sub n plus 1 of that derivative. And so fundamental theorem of calculus says that provided you can find an antiderivative on that interval, you can evaluate that antiderivative at the two endpoints. So I've got it kind of written backwards from the way you probably usually write that, but if I've got the y prime, then the antiderivative would be the function y, and then I've got that evaluated at the two endpoints. All right, and then in the next line, I've added the y of x sub n to both sides of the equation, so I've solved for y of x sub n plus 1. And then the next thing that I've done here is kind of connecting this to some of the numerical methods that we've talked about. So when we did these problems before, remember that we started with a point, x naught, y naught, that was an initial condition, and then we had a specific distance h that we use to get our next x-coordinate. And so if we're connecting to that idea here, each x-coordinate is going to be h units apart here. So this next representation just says if I have my prior x-value and I add h to it, that's how I get my next x-coordinate. So everything before that was essentially just fundamental theorem of calculus. This is the place where I basically connected that to the numerical approximation methods that we've talked about. Okay, the next thing here is that if I have an integral on the right hand side here that I don't know how to solve, uh, I can use Simpson's rule to approximate this integral. So the brackets that I have here is Simpson's rule with n equals 2 to approximate that integral. And so now I've got an approximation here instead of equality. But remember, that's what we're really after here is numerical approximation. And then the middle term in the brackets is split into two separate terms here, really because of what we're going to do next to get some numerical approximations. Okay, so if we kind of focus a little bit on what's happening in the brackets here, these are y prime. Remember that we are working with a differential equation, dy dx equals some function of x and y. And so these are all y prime or dy dx values. Those are all slopes at different points. All right, so we can use the differential equation to get four different slopes, but we're actually going to do something similar to what we did with improved Euler method which is use some different values at different points to get uh, different slopes. So I'm just going to talk through this a little bit with the graph and then I'll scroll up here and we'll look at the formulas. The basic idea is that I'm going to split my interval in half. So the h is the distance between my x coordinates, but I'm basically going to find a midpoint here at h over 2 units away from my initial point. So on my diagram here, that would be an x-coordinate of x sub 0 plus h over 2. And I'm going to have four different slopes here. The first slope is going to come from my initial point plugged into my differential equation, the right-hand side of my differential equation, and I'm going to get a slope. I'm going to then use that to get a new point at the midpoint, not all the way to the right-hand side, but at the midpoint. And so I'll get a new point at that midpoint at x equals x sub 0 plus h over 2. And then I'm going to calculate a y coordinate using that line segment there. And I'm going to get another slope there. So that will be my m2. All right, then I'm going to go back to my initial point And using that m2 slope, I'm going to get another point halfway 
at the midpoint so that I have another point and then I'm going to use that to get another prediction for a slope and we'll call that M3. We're going to use that to predict a point all the way at the right end of our interval and then I'm going to calculate a slope at that point as well and so I'll actually have four different slopes here, M1, M2, M3, and M4, that I'm going to use in my calculation. Okay, so what we see down here below is just some uh, symbols associated with that. So we've got slope at the left end point, slope at the midpoint with the Y coordinate predicted by the first slope we were given, slope at the midpoint with the Y coordinate predicted by the second slope, and slope at the right end point. Okay, so if we replace all of those slopes in that Simpson's rule formula, we get this formula that's right here. Notice that this part that I'm putting a box around here is a weighted average of four different slopes with these multiplying by two factors so that the middle slopes are weighted heavier. But if I just think about this as that weighted average of four slopes and I call that my slope that I'm actually going to use, then what I've got is basically the same kind of formula that we use for the other ones here. I've got my next y value is my prior y value plus this fancy slope that is the weighted average of four slopes times my h value or my delta x. So it's essentially just that equation of the line. It's just that I've done a lot of work here to get a really fancy kind of approximation for the slope that I'm going to use. So a lot more calculations at each iteration. You're really calculating four different slopes at each iteration. Um, so a lot more calculations at each iteration, but in theory this should give you a more accurate result. Uh, this is called a fourth order. Remember that the improved Euler method was called a second order method. This is a fourth order method because in general when we reduce the step size by a factor of four, the cumulative error is reduced by a factor approximately proportional to r to the fourth. So in general a much more accurate method but there is a lot more calculation at each step. So there is some trade-off between the efficiency of the calculation and the accuracy of the results. All right, let's look at the app that we've been using and look at some numerical values for that. Okay, so here is the app that I used in the last two videos for getting our numerical results. And so I've got the same example that we looked at before, uh, dy dt equals negative t times y plus y plus sine of y with an initial point given at 0, 1, and we're going to approximate until t equals 2, or we were using x equals 2 in our examples, with a step size of h. I've chosen my output format to be a graph and data points, and I want to go to the menu up here at the top, and I'm going to choose fourth order run computer method, and then click submit. When you do that, you get this next screen here, and so we see all the line segments based on our approximation method and our data points here. So again, these are x or t input and output, so x and y values for our points. All right, let's look at some examples, and I'm not going to do this anymore. You can see that you can just type different things in the app here and get different results but I'm going to just show a table where I've already put some results in and we're just going to talk a little bit about those. Okay, so here's the next example that we are going to look at and so we're going to do a little bit of compare and contrast using a variety of methods and a variety of step sizes and one of the things that we would be looking for here is stability in our answers. We also maybe want to compare a little bit the accuracy and think about where we might be able to get good results with kind of a minimum amount of computation. Before I actually do that though, I'm going to scroll up here and I've got a screenshot of the detailed plot for that differential equation. So I just want to look a little bit at what we're looking at here and think a little bit about what this graph is telling us and about what we expect our answers to look like. So we had dy dx equals negative x times y plus y plus sine of y, and you can see at the top of the window, that's what I've got typed in here, and we had a point, an initial point of 0, 
1. So 0, 1 would be right here. And looking at the arrows on the slope field, you can just basically follow those arrows and think about where you would expect that curve to be at when x is equal to 2. And so here's x equals 2, and if I just kind of follow the arrows and sketch in what that curve looks like it should look like, I get that when we're at x equals 2, I've got a y coordinate a little bit above 2. And of course on D field you can click or type in an initial condition and it will use a numerical approximation, a more sophisticated numerical approximation than we have been using, but it'll sketch a curve and you should be able to see that same thing that the Y value looks to be a little bit bigger than 2 when X is equal to 2. All right, let's go up and compare what we got from our table. Okay, so I just got all of these values out of that same app, just choosing different methods and different step sizes. I wrote down the final value, that final Y coordinate at X equals 2. And one of the things that we should notice here is that I have fairly stable results. All of these answers are fairly close to 2. I would expect that the ones with a step size of h equals 0.5 would be less accurate than the ones with a smaller step size, but all of these y values are pretty close to 2. And that is also in agreement with what we saw when I looked at the d field plot, that I expect those y values to be a little bit bigger than 2 when x is equal to 2. So I do have fairly stable results here. Uh, we should expect that the Runge-Kuda approximation would be better than the Euler approximation, and the improved Euler approximation would be somewhere in the middle. And so probably in this chart, I would expect that the Runge-Kuda method with the smallest step size should be the most accurate. I will point out though that even for the large step size, h equals 0.5, that Runge-Kuda method is pretty darn low. Those both round to approximately 2.05 for two decimal places of accuracy. Um, so these are all fairly stable results. They seem pretty believable based on that numerical approximation and the fact that I'm getting similar results for a variety of methods and a variety of step sizes. Be sure to look at that example in section 2.4, the very last example in section 2.4 where it talks a little bit about some pitfalls with these numerical approximation methods and sometimes when they can fail. Um, so there are certainly lots of different reasons that these numerical approximation methods could fail, but be sure that you look at that so you're aware of that as well.